Senator Kroger. Thanks, Mr. President. I rise to respond to the Privileges Committee report on whether there was any improper influence in relation to political donations by, made by Mr. Graham Wood and questions without notice asked by Senator Bob Brown and Senator Milne. On the 22nd of November 2011, I sent the President a 138-page submission on the actions of Senator Brown and the Greens to assist Mr Wood's purchase of the Triabunna Woodchip Mill. On the 23rd of November, the President gave precedence to a motion passed by the Senate on the 24th for this matter to be inquired into by the committee. Lawyers in their submission on behalf of Senators Brown and Milne claim that I conflated Senator Brown's negotiation of the 1.6 million donation from Grainwood, which occurred in May 2010, with Mr Wood's efforts to buy the Triabunna Wood Chip Mill um, in mid-2000. Um, Senator Kroger. Senator Hanson Young. Thank you, Mr President. Um, I draw your attention to Standing Order 194, which, uh, pursuant to Order 194, it is uh, in not in order during an adjournment debate to revive matters already debated, and I'd ask for your uh, ruling on that. Well, Senator McDonald. Well, on the point of order, Mr. Uh, uh, President, uh, what what Senator Kroger is, might be going to say, and we're not clear about that yet because we haven't heard, but uh, uh, but is clearly quite different to what uh, Senator Hanson Young has uh, said. Appreciate Senator Hanson Young and the Green coterie down there, who we, we note are uh, uh, obviously planning a leadership clue, and good luck to you. Uh, but, uh, Mr Deputy President, I, I don't think there's anything in the uh, point of order, and indeed uh, Senator Kroger is uh, quite within her rights to talk about the general issue uh, of uh, the, the subject of her speech. There is no point of order. Senator Kroger is entitled to address the issue. Senator Kroger. And, and if, I, if I may, Mr President, just by matter of clarification, I am speaking, um, uh, making some observations on the report that was brought down by the Privileges Committee. Um, Mr Wood's efforts to buy the tribe under Woodchip Mill in mid-2011, something which could not possibly have been foreseeable at the time of his donation. This is absolutely false. My submission clearly stated that the 1.6 million donation was negotiated in May 2010 and that this funded the Greens' ad campaign at the 2010 election. I did not submit that this negotiation was some incredibly prescient bribe, but rather an arrangement which led Senator Brand to advance Mr Wood's commercial interests when the Triabunna purchase arose. In terms of Privilege Resolution 6.3, it was an arrangement which had the effect of controlling Senator Brown's independence. In short, it was a significant, personally negotiated donation, indeed the biggest ever in Australia's history. And by his own words, Senator Brown said Senator he Hanson would be— Senator Hanson-Young, point of order. Thank you, Senator Mr President. Kroger. I would draw your attention to Standing Order 205. Uh, pursuing a quarrel between senators in this place. No, no there's, there's no point of order. Um, uh, uh, sen 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 Senator Kroger, continue. Um, by his own words, Senator Brown said he would be, and I quote, forever grateful. I know Senator Rhiannon agrees with this. Mr Wood said he had made a good investment, and they are his words. My contention was that this arrangement dictated Senator Brown's subsequent actions and by virtue of his position— Senator Kroger, resume your seat. Um, Senator Hanson, yeah. Thank you, Mr President. Point of order. Uh, if indeed uh, this isn't um, uh, disorderly understanding order 205, uh, pursuing a quarrel uh, between senators, could you please outline to the chamber why that is? No, I, I, I don't have to give a reason. Um, at all, um, it's it's within it, it is within the standing order for Senator Kroger to be going down the path and the line that she's going. On, 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 so, Se Se Senator, um, that is the that is the issue. It is within the standing order. Therefore, Senator Kroger is entitled to pursue her line. Uh, I would ask you to uh, take that on notice as to why what uh, the Senator, Senator Kroger over here is uh, speaking about doesn't reflect uh, in the Standing Order 205. 
Uh, Senator Macdonald. If that's another point of order, uh, and I would urge the Greens go back to plotting a change of leadership in the party, but Mr. Mr. Well, the point of order, Senator Craiger is talking about a committee report of this parliament. Uh, the Privileges Committee has reported to Parliament. Senator Craiger didn't have the opportunity to speak to the Privileges Committee report when it was tabled. She's doing it now. Senator Craiger, continue. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Um, and I was, as I was saying, by virtue of his position of influence as leader of the Greens and those of other Greens, principally Senator Milne, my submission did not suggest that Senator Milne acted corruptly though certainly this implication was drawn in relation to Senator Brown's behaviour. The committee's report noted that each paragraph of the terms of reference required it to consider whether an improper arrangement was sought or put in place. I reiterate, I did not assert that Mr Wood improperly offered his 1.6 million donation, nor did I assert that Senator Brown improperly sought it. The committee report also observes that while I offered evidence that conduct occurred that aligned with Mr Wood's interests, I did not provide evidence of a causal connection. But I did demonstrate that Senator Brown acted at every turn to advantage Mr Wood's bid and damage his competitors. Senators Brown and Milne explain this behaviour as nothing but the pursuit of long-standing policy objectives, while the Privileges Committee report discusses conduct which aligned with Mr Wood's interests. But on no fewer than 17 occasions, Senator Brown, Senator Milne and the Greens took action in the Senate, the media and elsewhere, which favoured Mr Wood's bid. This saw contortions whereby Senator Brown and the Greens opposed guns Senator given... Wright, uh, resume your seat, Senator Craiger. Senator Wright. Mr President, um, I do um, draw your attention to Standing Order um, number 193, um, the third of those um, aspects of it. And I submit that, in fact, by rehashing this ground, Senator Kroger actually is indeed making an imputation of improper motives. And I think any fair person listening would actually see that that is what she's doing by retraversing ground, which has already been the subject of the Privileges Committee report, at which point it was found that there was no evidence for any imputations. No, um, there's no there's, there is no point of order. There is no point of order. Senator, Thank you, Mr. Senator President. Craig. This saw contortions whereby Senator Brown and the Greens opposed guns getting any money from the Tasmanian Forest Intergovernmental Agreement when guns were negotiating to sell their wood chip mill to the Apron Logging Consortium. But inexplicably they didn't oppose guns getting money when they sold the mill to wood. For ten days Senator Brown railed against Forestry Tasmania receiving money from the IGA as settlement of its claim against guns, only to change his criticism after guns reached a settlement with the Tasmanian government, which involved 11.5 million being paid to Forestry Tasmania. Significantly, the committee states that my submission only contains circumstantial evidence and that it must therefore prefer the accounts of Senators Brown and Milne. While I say that circumstantial evidence is very, very strong, and I would argue insurmountable. I believe the test is whether or not Senator Brown would have at every turn acted to advantage Mr Wood's bid for the wood chip mill if Mr Wood hadn't given the Greens a 1.6 million donation. Would any other senator have gone to the lengths that Senator Brown and the Greens did to advantage a businessman's purchase of a specific property? In which he gained Sen six million Sen benefit Sen on Senator the purchase Craig, price. Resume your seat. Senator Hanson, yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I draw your attention again to Standing Order 193. The Senator is clearly reflecting on motives of uh, Senator Brown and Senator Milne, and indeed uh, uh, other other members within this place. Incorrectly, this. Uh, issue has been canvassed by the Privileges Committee. There has been a decision. It's not, uh, it's not anyone else's fault but Senator Kroger's that she continues to be the puppet of Senator Abetz in this issue and continues to prosecute this case despite the fact that it's been knocked out of the park. There's no point of, there is no point of order. There is, there is no point of order. Senator, Senator Kroger. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'll actually move along a little bit because I think that this is 
I think it is particularly interesting that you are um, being very critical of the outcome and the findings of the Privileges Committee, given that they have actually Senator, said— Senator Kroger, address your comments to the chair, Thank not you. to others in the chamber. Thanks, Mr President. I, I will return to my um, uh, uh, reflections. Um, the title of the Privileges Committee report, whether there was any improper influence in relation to political donations made by Mr Graham Wood and questions without notice asked by Senator Bob Brown and Senator Milne, suggests that the committee was also focused on this issue rather than the public advocacy and manoeuvring on behalf of Mr Wood's interests. Given so many of Senator Brown and Senator Milne's actions on behalf of Mr Wood's purchase happened outside the parliament, Perhaps we may have to wait for Senator Brown's Parliamentary Integrity Commissioner, a part of the Labor Greens agreement, which seems to have slipped his mind, in order to examine these events more fully. While on this point, though, the submission on behalf of Senators Brown and Milne states that there is no basis for the allegation that the sale to Tribunner Investments was conditional on any compensation being paid to Senator governments. Wright, um, Senator Kroger, resume your seat. Senator yeah. Wright. Mr President, with respect, um, I would be hard-pressed to think what would be an imputation yeah, of motive order. under Ooh. point of order. Uh, the point of order is um, in relation to um, Standing Order 193, and what I'm saying is that if there has not been an imputation of motive in what Senator Kroger is saying, it would be hard to imagine what would countenance, what would actually constitute an imputation of motive. It's clearly going to be on the record, it's going to be on the Hansard record what's been said. And my submission is that it is indeed an imputation of motive over and over again, accusing someone of basically accusing um, of, of improper motives inside and outside the parliament. So I, I, I just want to make that very clear and have that on the record. There's no point of order. I've just ruled Senator. Yeah, no, another, another point of order. Another Senator point of order, Mr. Mr. President. These are vexatious points of order which you've already commented upon in this parliament. We have four people in the Greens political party plotting a leadership challenge, but each one that's, of them has got up that, and raised— No, no. Order, Senator Hanson-Young. The, the point you, I'm making— the that, point that, of is, order, that is debating the issue. It's no, common. I'm not debating the issue, Mr President. What I'm saying is you've continuously ruled in the last five minutes that there is no point of order. In spite of your rulings and in challenge of your rulings, the Greens continue to raise frivolous points of order, which you've already ruled upon. I ask you to warn them, and if they Senator, can't abide by your rulings, I ask you to remove them from the chamber. Senator, Senator, Senator uh, there is no point of order. Senator Hanson Young. Mr. President, I would also now like you to reflect on the comments made by uh, Senator Macdonald, reflecting on motives of uh, both myself and others uh, in this chamber. It seems that that in itself uh, is uh, in breach of 193. There's, there's no point of order. There's no point. Or, order. 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 Senator Kroger, you've got Thanks, 327 Mr. remaining. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll return to the submission of Senators Brown and Milne. It cites a gun stock exchange announcement that their sale of the woodchip mill to Woods Tribe under investments was to complete on 15 July 2011, before much of the Greens manoeuvring on Woods' behalf. Much turns on this. Yet the glib arguments on this point by lawyers for Senators Brown and Milne studiously ignore the fact that guns had a hold over the sale, that there were two successive 60-day priority notices lodged over the Woodchip Mills transfer to Woods Tribe Owner Investments, and that the transfer of this property had still not been registered as at 11th of October 2011. The committee has accepted Senator Brown's word that his actions were not influenced by the donation. By his own account, Senator Brown first learned of Mr Wood's proposal to develop the woodchip mill on ABC TV. He has said, knowing the man, I contacted him and said I thought it was a good idea, following which they spoke a couple of times. The ABC TV report about Mr Wood trying to buy the Tribuna mill went to air on 10 June. In the Weekend Australian a month earlier, Matt Denham wrote, the Weekend Australian can confirm that players in the environment movement floated the idea of a consortium to buy the Tribuna mill in order to shut it and develop the site for tourism. The idea to form a consortium to buy the Tribuna mill and develop the site for tourism was around in the Tasmanian environment movement at least a month before Senator Brown 
claims uh, you heard Senator about Hanson, it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I draw your attention to Standing Order 196, which is tedious, re tedious repetition. We've heard this argument over and over again. We now see Senator Kroger prosecuting, re-prosecuting a case that she lost, that she's already lost. Loser. L O S E R. She's lost. There's no. Now, absolutely no way should we be seeing an issue? adjournment debate being taken place that reflects on the you motives are, of the senator. You are debating the issue if you come to your point of order. My point of order, Mr President, is that uh, standing order, I would ask you to reflect on standing order 196, which is tedious repetition. There's no point of order. There's no order. No point of order. Senator Kroger has one minute fifty-one remaining. Thanks, Mr. President, and I will uh, um, uh, refrain from speaking in the same manner and being abusive like those on the cross benches over there. If I may continue, though, this is difficult to believe given Senator Brown's intimate involvement in the Tasmanian environment movement and his bevy of staff who should have drawn the media speculation to his attention. Interestingly, Senator Brown said he learnt of Mr Wood's global mail venture when he read of it in the paper. May Order. I say another coincidence? So we have Mr Graham Wood bankrolling the global mail. Senator Brown makes a submission to the media inquiry advocating tax deductibility for not-for-profit ventures. Monica Attard makes a submission advocating the same measure. And the media inquiry makes a sympathetic recommendation mentioning the Global Mail. A great coincidence, I'm sure. Incredible. Mr President, given that Senator order, Brown— Order. Order. Senator Waters. Look, I'm, I, it is with great reluctance that I rise on a point of order, and it is, again, the clear imputations being made not just by members of this House, but also uh, personal reflections on other folk, which are both of which precluded under Standing Order 193, subsection 3. And I, I ask, uh, Mr President, if you could kindly, for our benefit, explain what there's, possibly there's, could there fit is no, that if this There is doesn't. no point of order, Senator Waters, I can tell you that. Um, I will be looking at the hand of this speech, and, and if it's necessary, I will come back to the chamber, if it is necessary. Mr. President, Mr President, I, um, I don't believe we've heard the last of this matter. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually going to conclude this now because I think the disgraceful interjection, while I am reflecting on a report that I was denied leave during the week I was denied leave during the week to actually respond to a report that I had initiated and now I have to seek time in a German to make observations on a report I initiated we clearly have not seen the last of this the behavior of those on the cross benches diminishes them hugely and I think they will find that in time to come.